In this video here, we're going to cover the European flavor of wiring. I had always heard this called the Lucas wiring diagram, but when I went to look it up, I couldn't confirm that. So we're going to go with just European wiring. This is the way they have it laid out. Power's at the top. Ground's going to be at the bottom. Looking up at the top here, we have 30. If you're going to be dealing much with the European, memorize this one. 30, it's always battery voltage. The ISO style relay or the Bosch style relay has a pin 30 on it. That's where that comes from. Next one down is a circuit 15. That's hot and run and start. X would also be the same as 75 and another one. That's going to be your ignition switch. 31 is ground, which I thought was kind of weird because they have ground at the bottom. And most of the time you'll just find the wires going to the bottom of the page. I've got this zoomed in. What we're looking at here is the top of the page. Here's the middle of the page. And then down here is at the bottom. So we're going to be jumping around. I have two pages in here. This is the second page, top and bottom. Coming back over here to the first page. Let's take a look. We start at pin 30 here. We have a splice. Coming down, it becomes 2.5 RO. And then the 237, which is S237, which so far I wouldn't know what that is, but then it has a 20A. It's like, okay, I've got a 20 amp fuse. I could recognize the symbol for a fuse. We've got this little S-shaped piece right there, which is on the other side also. Oh, it's going to be part of the fuse box, which, yeah, I know it's not going to be just a single fuse. Then it comes down to 2.4 RO slash BL, which, whatever that is, a splice here with this line. And what that's telling you is that this splice and this splice, it's actually, that's just one splice, but they didn't draw diagonally. They, everything goes vertical or horizontal. This fuse supplies power for this component down here, as well as whatever's 11. Come down here. This looks like a ruler to me, and we've got an R. R for ruler. I'm going to come down here and look at the Z24. I've got an electric heater there, and I've got a tuning fork right here. Then down here at the bottom, when you see these lines coming down here to the splice, this is your ground, which I was just kidding about some of those things that I said there. Getting down here at the bottom, here's the codes that they have. Everything on their wiring diagram is code. They're not going to tell you, okay, this is a radio, or this is an amplifier, or this is a window. It's all in code, but they give you the code down at the bottom of the page. Let's start with the wire. Coming back up here, we have our RO slash BL, which RO is red, BL is blue. This is going to be a red wire with a blue stripe. These abbreviations are based on the German word for it. So WS white. If you've ever seen Julie Andrews and the Sound of Music singing Edelweiss, Weiss, that's white. The black is Schwartz or Schwartz. I have a hard time saying that without putting a T on there. You got to get used to the German way. You have people who can speak three languages or trilingual. People who can speak two languages or bilingual. The person who speaks one language is American. And unfortunately, I'm American. I need a lot of help when it comes to the German words and this European way of doing these wiring diagrams. The Z24, that's the rear window defogger with the antenna. Right here, that's the heating element, so that's the rear defogger. We've got ground for the defogger, and this is, if we follow it up, we go to power. This, what I call the tuning fork, is actually the antenna. The antenna to me should go to the radio. So I follow this over and it comes to circle K. Yeah, it's not really circle K. That's a transistor. This is some sort of electronic component. R24. I come over here. R24. That's an antenna amplifier. They're going to take the signal that's received at the antenna. They're going to clean it up, boost the signal. Then from there, this is going to be sent on this one right here to the radio. This is going to be most likely like a coaxial cable. This dotted line right there is the shielding around that coaxial cable, which is grounded through the radio and through this amplifier. Everything on here is in code. You have to get used to the code. I spent a summer working at Mercedes. Had to get used to these wiring diagrams. There was a couple days I spent about two hours or so each day just going through these wiring diagrams and learning how to use this. The thing that I learned, these are amazing wire diagrams. They're really good. 
they are also nowhere close to intuitive. You've got to spend the time to get used to it. At the dealership, it was all electronic. You came over and you found this R. It was a hyperlink. You could click on that hyperlink. It would give you a pop-up menu. And there was typically four or five choices that would take you to other pages that would explain what that component does. Give you a description of where it's at. Take you to a photograph of where it is on the car. Just gave it all kinds of information. It was really cool, really fun to be able to learn how to use that. But again, it is not intuitive. You have to spend some time with these wiring diagrams to learn how to use them. This one I got off of all data. It was just a page that they scanned and put in there. What all data started doing was putting these blue boxes on there and these blue boxes were hyperlinks made these much easier to navigate through because if you have a large wiring diagram you may have five or six pages on there i just put two on here even though there was actually three with this i just wanted to try to keep it simple i didn't have to exit out of this page go to the next page and then open that one up when they put these hyperlinks in there, if I just wanted to go to the next one, I could click on this and it immediately took me to the next wiring diagram. That was nice, made it easier to use. On this one here, where we're looking at this 20, and we looked at the 11 earlier, but I waited until now, this 20 is lined up with 45. What that means is I need to go to the grid 20 over here, follow this up, there's the 45. That's where this wire continues at. If I wanted to find what was going on with this wire, I've got to come up, call 45, come over here, 20. There's where it continues. It comes to T6E, which is a wire connector. Comes down to E15, which is the rear defogger switch. And it comes over to R18, which is another circle K. Not really left frequency crossover that's where these get so confusing when you have a single wire that goes to multiple components you're going to be jumping all over this wiring diagram trying to follow it and what i would end up doing is get a piece of paper and i would just start tracing out to make it easier for myself to understand admittedly when i get to working on a european car especially with that's a complex wiring diagram i go to pro demand where ProDemand already drew it out in ProDemand style of wiring diagram, I'll start reading it from there. Once I've got a handle on it, I will then come back to this wiring diagram because ProDemand, unfortunately, leaves out a lot of connections. When you go to testing, knowing those connections are there and being able to find those connections and do the testing at that point becomes really handy. These are really good wiring diagrams. However, they're nowhere close to intuitive. This one is for the radio. And we've got like this one here, our R2 and R3. Looking at that, that looks like a speaker to me. I come over here, R2 and R3, left front, right front speaker. So this is a really cheap radio. I don't even remember which vehicle I got this for. But if you come down here, you see that these two speakers are wired in parallel, which means the two front speakers have the exact same sound on it. So that's not even stereo. Uh, it may be stereo for front and rear, but it's not stereo when your two front speakers have the exact same sound. Reading these, learning the numbers for their circuits, you can just look at those numbers and know what they are. Then you get to use them a lot. You'll get used to some of the symbols, the codes, and you got to use these a lot before you'll get used to those codes. Otherwise, you're spending your time looking down here. Okay, what is that code? Then going back up, being able to continue on. I don't want you to think that these are not good wiring diagrams. They really are very good wiring diagrams. They're just hard to learn. Covered some of the tricks for being able to use these. Hopefully that helps you. And that the next time you come across one of these wiring diagrams, you can get started with it, figure out what's going on.